These are some legitimately fun facts about Spanish. Hi, I'm Becca. It's snowing outside and I am way too cheap to turn on the heating. So instead, let's talk about what makes Spanish so fun. All right, we'll start off simple. The country with the most Spanish speakers in the world is Mexico. And then, surprisingly, it's the United States. What? Huh? But the United States isn't even a Spanish speaking country. Uh, guess it is. About 42 million people in the US speak Spanish as their first language, and then an additional 15 or so million also speak Spanish. So that's about 17% of the United States. So when you look at the language rankings, you get Mexico, the United States, and then Colombia, followed by Spain. So that's right, haha, -ha, the US has more Spanish speakers than the colonizer when, oh, wait, maybe we shouldn't be celebrating that because I think the US is a colonizer too. Oh yeah, all right, let's talk about Puerto Rico. Did you know that at the end of a syllable, a lot of the time Puerto Ricans don't say the letter R, but Puerto Rico has an R in it at the end of a syllable. Puerto Rico. What? So how do they say it? Well, a lot of the time they say it, Puerto Rico. Huh? So if you wanna sound like a Puerto Rican, maybe you should try switching up your R's and your L's. Mm, or maybe actually don't do that. You might offend someone. Speaking of Spanish dialects that are somewhat unusual, did you know that Equatorial Guinea in Sub-Saharan Africa is a Spanish-speaking country? Yeah, I didn't know this either. In Equatorial Guinea, 67.5% of the country actually speaks Spanish. I feel like we always think about Spanish as being something that's spoken in the Americas and then Spain and maybe kind of used to be spoken in the Philippines, but I don't think of it as an African language. Except the thing is, it really is. In Equatorial Guinea, the population speaks Spanish. Why is this? Well, obviously it used to be a Spanish colony. It was a colony from 1778 all the way up until 1968. That's almost 200 years of pretty recent history. And it has a pretty unique dialect that differentiates it from the Spanish spoken in a lot of different places in the world. So one example is that in most Spanish dialects, when you say the letter D in the middle of two vowels, like in a word, you don't actually say the letter D. So like take the word for nothing, N-A-D-A. It's pronounced nada in most Spanish speaking places, except in Equatorial Guinea, you would say that D. You would say nada. Here's an example of someone saying, welcome to Equatorial Guinea in Spanish. And you can hear in the word for welcome, bienvenido, that he's actually saying the D there. Bienvenido a Equatorial Guinea. Bienvenido. Another interesting thing about the Spanish in Equatorial Guinea is that they don't really differentiate between the subjunctive and the indicative. Whoa, that's a language learner's dream. If I wouldn't have had to worry about the subjunctive, I think I could have saved myself a lot of time learning Spanish. Well, in Equatorial Guinea, it's not really used like that, so maybe I should just fly over there. Anyway, there's a lot of really cool features. There's a whole big laundry list. Um, I recommend looking it up because I could make an entire video on this. Going back to that not a thing for a minute, in English, a lot of the time people will say something like, what are you up to? And then someone else will say, oh, nada. Yeah, that's because in English, we use a lot of Spanish. Um, but a lot of the time we use that Spanish wrong. A good example of this is that people in English like to say stuff like, no problemo. Oh, hey, sorry, I was late. Oh, no problemo. Well, okay, so here's the thing is that you would not say that in Spanish because problemo is not a word. The thing is the word for problem in Spanish is problema. Yeah, right. Uh, there's an A at the end of that word. There's no O, oh, except the thing is the word problema actually uh, is masculine. So like it would be like el problema, which is kind of strange because usually words that end in A are feminine, but in this case it's not. So I don't know, it's all convoluted. But anyway, if you're saying no problemo, you're using the wrong word. And also you're probably making fun of Spanish speakers in a way. So I don't know, maybe don't do that, but you can if you want, uh, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. But here's the thing, right? Is that Spanish speakers a lot of the time, well, they adopt English words too. And a lot of the time it sounds really strange to an English speaker. So there's a thing in Spanish where a lot of the time two consonants that can go together in English don't go together well in Spanish. And so while you can say a word like spoiler in English, that doesn't really work in Spanish because S and P together, that sp sound doesn't work in the beginning of a word like that. And so in Spanish, people say stuff like spoiler. Kind of weird, right? 
Yeah, it's because they need to separate that S and the P uh, with a syllable break. So S and then boiler. An example of this actually went somewhat viral on the internet um, with the word Shrek, right? So like the big green guy, uh-huh, him, yeah, see what I'm doing, that's Shrek. In a lot of places that speak Spanish, particularly I think Spain, people don't say Shrek or even like Shrek or something like that. They would say Estrek. Here's a TikTok of a lady saying it. Estrek. <laughs> and the thing is people are doing this entirely subconsciously. It's just because in Spanish, that shra sound just doesn't exist. So you've got to adapt it to something to make it easier for people to say. Now, interestingly, people who know more about English or have had more exposure to English or speak English are a lot less likely to do this, even if they're a native speaker of Spanish. And finally, this is something that has honestly flummoxed a lot of linguists. There are an unusually low number of Creole languages that are based on Spanish. So a Creole language is a language that occurs from the mixing of one language with one or a bunch of other languages. And it usually occurs because people are being forced to interact with each other for something like commerce or slavery. Well, because the European powers of the last few hundred years were such evil bastards that kept colonizing people and enslaving people and forcing people to trade with them and taking all their resources and stuff, a lot of Creole languages have emerged from European colonial languages like English and French and Portuguese, but weirdly, not that many have emerged from Spanish. And it's not because the Spanish colonizers were like nicer than the British or something. They definitely were not. But in today's world, there's around a hundred different Creoles. About 40 of them come from English and another 15 or so come from French, a bunch come from Portuguese. So you get all these languages like Singlish and Haitian Creole, Gullah, Louisiana Creole, just a variety of different languages that you've probably heard Heard of, but in comparison, there are almost no Spanish Creoles and most of the ones that do exist aren't used today. There's probably only about four or five in active use, several of which are in the Philippines, a former Spanish colony. And a lot of linguists find this very strange. There've been a lot of papers written about it, but I'm not about to sit here and tell you why this is the case, because honestly, I don't wanna get canceled by a bunch of angry Spanish linguists. If you liked this video, look at my other videos. They're all about languages and linguistics and they're lots of fun. Um, subscribe, I've been posting pretty frequently several times a week. Um, I'll see you next time and bye.